decision to send the troops into Crimea, claiming they're only there to protect the uh, citizens. Well, he actually says that uh, they're not there at all. We know all about that. His language was interesting, saying he didn't want to use force but couldn't rule it out. And President Obama hit back, saying Russia is flouting international law by pushing its forces onto another country. So which president is winning the argument at the moment? Let's discuss that with Dr. James Summers, the director of the Center for International Law and Human Rights at Lancaster University. He thinks in the short term it's Putin. And live in our central London studio is Alexander de Klasov, who says the West needs to calm down and back off. Very good afternoon to you, gentlemen. Dr. Summers, first of all, then. So you feel uh, at the moment it's pretty obvious, isn't it? Uh, president Putin has the whip hand. Well, he, he does have a stronger position. He is uh, in control of the Crimean Peninsula. The Ukrainian uh, military is un incapable and, and unwilling to resist him. The West has already ruled out military action. So in the short term, he certainly has a much stronger position. Yes. OK, well, let's uh, get the view of Alexander Nekrasov. Uh, President Putin uh, may have the whip hand, but uh, does he have justification for his arguments? Well, to quote your foreign secretary, I think it's time for Western politicians and you chaps in Western media to de-escalate your rhetoric. Because let's face it, a lot of this reporting and a lot of those comments coming from all sorts of Western uh, uh, capitals is not helping. And when we talk about diplomatic efforts, you see, the problem is this. The Russian government does not accept the interim government in Kyiv for one simple reason. It has united itself with open neo-Nazis and racists, and four cabinet ministers are coming from a party. If you, if you read its program on the internet, you will find out these are neo-Nazis and anti-Semites. The Russian government does not want to deal with such a regime. OK, well, Dr. Summers, uh, answer that. Uh, Mr. Krasov, I hope you exempt Sky News from uh, that charge that we're kind of ramping it up. I mean, I think you'll see as we're having this debate that we're just dealing with this quite rationally and trying to analyse it. Dr. Summers, tell us, uh, does that argument hold water in your view? Well, the Russian government um, has made these accusations. I think they're rather overblown. There are, um, certainly where there were ultra-nationalist uh, elements in the demonstrations. The, the government contains a variety of members, but they're not, many of them are not of those sorts of uh, ultra-nationalist groups. They tend to be drawn, although there are some nationalists and perhaps some nationalists um, who have, have expressed views that um, are, are not necessarily the ones you'd expect from Western politicians, they generally draw from a liberal and relatively pro-Western uh, section. Okay. And the reality is that um, Russia's action in the Crimea is a straightforward violation of the United Nations Charter. Uh, and international law, which says that states cannot simply intervene in another state simply because they don't like its government. Yeah, well, that's a fair point, isn't it, Mr. Nekrasov? OK, um, the analysis of the, the government or the administration that's taken over there or whatever you want to call it may be correct, but even so, you can't just put your troops on the ground willy-nilly. Well, first of all, uh, the reasons why there had to be measures taken in Crimea it was because the intelligence uh, services have... Uh, have informed uh, the Kremlin that there were groups of armed uh, uh, Ukrainian nationalists and others moving to Crimea, just like they did, by the way, and tried to take uh, position and, and control in eastern parts. So they had, to be, they had to be stopped. Another important thing is this. When we talk about aggression and, and, and invasion, as Russia is accused of, well, invasions are, well, we, we saw invasions in Iraq or Libya where bombings start and people get killed. Here, the, n nothing happened like that. And the, the population is quiet, and nobody's firing at each other. So how can you call this an invasion and aggression when, when more than 60% of the local population are actually supporting this? OK, well, let's hope it stays that way. Uh, Mr. Krasov, thank you very much indeed. And uh, uh, thanks to Dr. James Summers there as well. Well, now to the hacking trial, and Rebecca Brooks, the